Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm telling you, scammers are getting bolder and bolder and bolder by the minute. Today we're going to just do a real dive into, I think, one of the most bizarre and shocking real estate scams that nearly took down a piece of American history. Yes, we're talking about the fraudulent foreclosure of Graceland. Elvis Presley's legendary home. All right. It all started when a company named Nasani, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but Nasani Investments and Private Lending LLC. They claim that before Lisa Marie Presley died, that she borrowed $3.8 million against the home using it as collateral. But as we all know, um, you know, when she passed, they're saying that, well, they didn't get the, the rest of the money. So they went to the daughters and demanded that they pay. Their, the daughter, Danielle Riley, Lisa Marie's daughter, she is currently the sole owner of Graceland. And she said that no, her mom never took out no loan and she never gave them a deed of trust. Well, guys, listen, uh, these people went ahead and they published in the paper that they were going to foreclose <laughs> on Graceland. So listen, let me just, you know, put you up and let you know what, you know, how things are done. Tennessee is a non-judicial state. So typically you really don't have to go to court to foreclose on a property unless that person like counterclaims you, the homeowner. All right. And so that's exactly what happened. Daniel Riley for, went ahead and fought back. I understand that she also contacted like the FBI and some other agencies as well as uh, taking these people to court. All right. Uh, luckily, they also found the notary public. I mean, Republic, the notary public. <laughs> and uh, that lady said that she's never met or spoken to anybody from Nasani Investments. They never gave her any paperwork. She's never met any Presley. She's never visited Graceland. They gave her the paperwork and she says, she don't know how they got her seal, but that's not even her handwriting. They wrote her name, but she's, she's like, that doesn't even remotely look the way I write. So it was ever obvious that the documents were forged and so were the signatures. On top of that, they never recorded the deed. Now, I do mortgage notes, and I know for a fact, you got to record the deed before you try to foreclose on somebody. It's not going to go through. Okay, and then here's the thing. According to them, they are located, Nasani, they are located in Missouri. So, being that the loan was obtained in a different state, is like with all the banks in Tennessee, why would you have to go to Missouri for a loan? And when that happens, uh, a lot of times the process for foreclosure can be a little bit more complicated when it's done that way. So there were there were a few red flags here, okay? But on top of that, I searched myself. Riley says that the company was fake altogether. 
when I looked up the company, I didn't see where they were registered anywhere. I checked the Secretary of State's website. So it appears that it was just a, a company name that this woman just made up. You know, and not legitimate in any way, shape, nor form. You know, and it's crazy how, you know, this particular home, which is a tourist attraction, um, representing, you know, rock and roll music history, was nearly snatched away in this particular scheme with forged documents fake signatures, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, it really is. Now, listen, this is not a common scam, but it has happened to f before to other people. Um, it's just that this is like the first time it's happened to Graceland, and I think probably any other mansion for that, you know, manner particularly one that's a national monument, okay, you know, um, one would say, but how, you know, like, how did this person get away with it for, you know, so long or what have you? Well, you know, things happen. And one of the things that this woman did, um, by the way, the, the person uh, that is guilty, her name is Finley. So anyway, what she did to stir things up is she wrote a letter uh, claiming that she was Nigerian and also taking responsibility for the forgery and the fake foreclosure. But yeah, things took a, an even stranger turn <laughs> when investigators began digging deeper and deeper the truth surface, uh, and they realize, well, number one, even though she claimed that she was an identity thief from Nigeria, the language in the letter was in both English and Lugandan, which is from Uganda, not from Nigeria. So, my mind says to me, she got somebody, she probably paid somebody to write that letter for her. Okay? Because she's actually a white woman from New Missouri. It's possible she's been to Africa before. Um, it's possible she, she sp speaks that language, but I doubt it. Honestly, I really do. I really do. And by the way, this woman, the culprit, the one who is going to be serving 20 years in jail, uh, know this. She, it, her last name is Finley, Lisa Janine Finley. But she's also been going by Lisa Holden, Lisa Howell, Gregory Nassani, <laughs> Kurt Nassani, Lisa Janine Sullins, Carolyn Williams. She, she has been taking on all of these different aliases. The fact that she's taken on aliases of being a man, I kind of wonder if she has multiple personalities. I'm not a doctor, but I'm just saying, it's kind of strange to me that she would pretend to be all these different people. You understand me? So, yeah, man. <laughs> but she is a special kind of something. I tell you that. I tell you that. Because, man, the damage that she did, you know, especially, I mean, it would be really um, terrible if it actually went through because, you know, whether you like Elvis or not, whether you like rock and roll or not, that is history. You know, that place is, yes, it's his legacy, but it's also American le legacy, you know, and it's terrible that something like this, 
you know, that home could have been lost due to greed and deception. But, you know, luckily, this crime was uncovered in time. Graceland remains open, serving as a shrine to Elvis and the landmark for music lovers everywhere. But the story of this fraudulent foreclosure will always serve as a cautionary tale, a reminder of just how far some will go in pursuit of personal gain. That's why I say, guys, get title insurance. Sign up for a deed monitoring service. A lot of states have it for free. Um, otherwise, you can go to a company that you'll have to pay. And don't worry too much about how much you got to pay because you can probably deduct that from your taxes. All right. So, guys, what do you think? Are you shocked like me? Drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts on this insane scam. All right. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.